I've done many air directly projects before, but I was never really sculpting with the clay. This will be a simple bunny shape. I start with the bottom. I take a big piece of clay and knead it well between my hands. I start rolling it into a cylinder shape, but with one end wider than the other. Moving on to the head, I take another piece of clay and give it more of the egg shape. The hardest part, ears. I roll out flat piece of clay and cut the bunny ear shape out. I squeeze the edges and slightly bend it to give it more realistic ear shape look. With the damp sponge I remove all the imperfections. So I had to try it out before I could show it to you. I cut the ear a bit shorter and start attaching it to the right position on the head. Using my clay tools, I almost spread the clay to connect two parts together. I cut the bottom in the right angle and attach head to it. Again, to make it stronger, I roll another piece of clay and put it where two parts are meeting. Once it's dry, I take acrylic paint mixed with baking soda and apply all over my new bunny. To create woven basket, I will need some kind of the mold. In this case, I'm using square ice cream box. It's plastic and very flexible, so it's a big bonus as I will be working on its outside part. I rolled out flat, big and long piece of clay. I cut the uneven edge off and then from that point I mark distance of 15 mm. This is how thick each strap will be. First I mark them uh, and then cut them through. Once I have my old straps cut out, I start working on the woven effect. I try to keep the same gap between each strap. 
At first, I covered the bottom part of my box, which will be the bottom of my new basket. The tricky part is to create a long enough piece which will go all the way around the box. You can just try to roll out such a long piece or connect few smaller ones as I did. Continuing the waving pattern, I create the walls for my new basket. I cut the axis off and connect two ends together. Using special tools, you can really make it seamless. For this size, I've used two long straps. Once I'm happy with it, I cut the excess clay off. Also, remember to press the clay uh, when two parts are touching each other. This way you will ensure that the whole construction is solid. Like always, some tidying before drying. I gently remove the container and using sanding block, I sand down the top part. I've decided to go with the green color. At the end, I've changed the shadow of the green for darker one, as the first one didn't cover very well and I didn't want to go twice with it. You can try using spray paint, as painting with the brush is very time consuming, as you want to make sure you cover all the bits. To create chopping board, I take a big piece of clay and roll it out flat uh, to about 1 cm thick. You can make the board as big or as small as you want. It also can be square or rectangle. Using ruler, I make sure all the edges are nice and straight. Damp sponge will get rid of any imperfections and make the cut smoother. I've rolled out another piece of clay, it's important that it's the same thickness as the other part. Using knife, I first draw the shape of the chopping board handle and then cut it out. For the extra decor detail, I cut out small circle on the top. To connect two parts together, I make few cuts on the side of the board, like also on the handle. A little bit of water and I stick them together. To make it even stronger and get rid of the visible connection, I'm adding small pieces of clay and blend them in with the rest. And gently flip the whole piece and smooth the surface on its other side as well. Going back to the front and I slightly lift the corners of the board up, but you can leave it straight. Once it's dry, which took about two days, I can start decorating it. This piece is only uh, for decorative purpose as air dry clay is not food safe. First, I paint it whole in white color. 
I grabbed some decorative tissue paper and cut out the shapes I want to add to my board. Using a gloss mod board, I glue them to the surface like also I cover the whole surface for the better finish. This is really easy to make project but very effective. You can see them in many shops and I think they add a unique look to your interior. You can make them using polymer clay but for the cheaper option I'm going with air dry clay. I take a big piece of clay and roll it to achieve one very long piece. You need big worktop to be able to do it. Longer it gets the harder it is to roll. Of a meter long piece I fold in half and create a knot. You have to be very gentle and don't let two pieces stick together. Once I'm happy with the shape, I cut the end straight. Polymer clay will give you smoother look, but this one I can smooth out before and after drying. I've decided to turn my old candle jar into a new one, something more eye-catching. I take air dry clay and roll it out flat. Try to roll it to the same thickness, about half centimeter. I move it onto my glass. The bottom part can be almost straight with the glass. For the top, make sure you have some extra clay. I won't cover the bottom part of the glass. I only wrap it around so it stays secured in one place. Top part I also wrap around, remember that air dry clay shrinks when drying so don't wrap it too tight, make it slightly loose around the glass. Leave about 2cm of the clay inside the glass and the rest you can cut off. I've rolled out another piece of clay and added it to the rest. I cut out the excess and then connect the ends together. With water, I smooth out the edge. To create the pattern, I'm using end of Sharpie, but it can be any object with round end. I dip it in the water so it doesn't stick to the clay when I'm pressing. I try to make irregular pattern all around the container.
Before I leave it to dry, I gently smooth it out with water. Because few small cracks appeared after drying, I've decided to paint it. I'm using very similar color to the clay mixed with baking soda. Thicker consistency of this paint will nicely fill all the imperfections. I glue two candle wicks and pour the wax. To create a decorative bowl, I take a big piece of clay and roll it out flat. It don't have to be thick. With the knife, I draw irregular round edge. You can make this as big or as small as you want. When I'm happy with the design, I can cut it out. Using damp sponge and my fingers, I smooth out the edges and the whole surface. I take a right size bowl, remove gently the clay from the table and move it onto the bowl. I gently press each ruffle to give the final look to this bowl. The rough side of the sponge is great for getting rid of any cracks and imperfections. After drying, I take my soft sanding block and smooth out the surface, mostly the edges. I leave it in its original color and only apply layer of mold podge for extra protection. For my next project, I will use this flower pot as a base for my new vase slash pot. At first, I cover it with cling film, so once the clay is dry, it will be easier to remove it. I take a big piece of clay and roll it out flat, around half a centimeter thick. I roll it uh, to more rectangle shape. I measure if the piece is long enough and then cut it. So I start with the wall of the vase. I wrap it around the pot and connect two ends together. I try to make it seamless. I found a big enough cutter for the bottom part of the vase. Making cuts around the edge helps two parts stick together better. With the sculpting tool I connect the wall with the bottom making it look like a one piece. Thank you. 
Using the same square cutter, I start creating the design on my bust. I have to be very gentle and one by one I cut out the squares. All together I've made three rows of them. Make sure the clay is bigger and stay uh, loose on the pot. I dry clay shrinks when drying so by leaving enough room you will be able to remove it from it later on. I put it slightly higher for drying. This way none of the edges touches the table. Once the outside is dry and safe to be removed from the pot, I'm gonna add some clay slip inside just to cover the cup between the wall and the bottom. Once it's completely dry, I take sanding block and sand down the whole surface. To get to the small holes, I'm using thin nail fire. This time I'm going with black acrylic paint. You can use it as a cover for flower pot or just as a decorative piece. I take quite a big piece of it and start rolling it out flat to about one centimeter thick. I need to cut out two different sizes of circle shape and I do it with the cookie cutter. For the wall decoration, I will actually need only half of each circle, so I divide it in half. With the decorations like this, I used to make the hole for the string uh, at the front of each piece. This time I want to give it more tidy look and I make the hole through inside of the piece. I take thin skewer and gently push it. I make sure it goes exactly in the middle so the decoration will be hanging straight. Using damp sponge I smooth out the edges and the whole surface of this piece. Last piece of the whole decoration I want to be same width as the biggest half circle shape. So I drew the line around it and then add extra lines creating like an arch shape. To make the cut straight and smooth, I dip the knife in the water. Using the same technique, I create the hole in this piece as well. Remember that clay shrinks when drying, so make the hole slightly bigger than you need. After two days of drying, all my pieces are now ready to be painted. I'm using acrylic paints.
Once they are all dry, I take cord, wooden beads and collect all these pieces together, creating final wall decoration. This is very easy project to make, but it creates really nice decoration. I start with rolling out flat piece of clay, about one and one and a half centimeters thick. I take round object to be able to create the perfect arch. I place it on the top of the clay and mark half of it circuit. Coming from the ends, I make two straight lines. Again, you can make it as big or as small as you like. You can always find the container first and then adjust the size of the clay to it. I will need two identical pieces, so I roll out another piece of clay. There is a clever trick if you want uh, your piece to have the same thickness on the whole surface. Put it between two pieces of double and then start rolling. It is a good idea, I don't do it too often as usually I don't need such a thick piece. However, if I will find thinner doubles, I will definitely follow this trick. To make two same size pieces, I simply move one onto another one and follow the edge around. Be gentle when moving the clay as it can stretch easily and lose its original shape. Before I leave them to dry, I smooth out the edges and whole surface. When drying, I recommend turning them from time to time or even put something on them for a while. This way, you will ensure that they stay flat. Once they dry, choose your favorite color and paint them. You can add more details just to the front, but overall I would paint all the sides. As I said before, you can first find the vase and then adjust the clay size to it. If not, find the item later on, which will be uh, anyway nicely covered and invisible behind the clay. Ideally, it would be a square item as it has bigger surface to stick to the clay but with the right glue, round shape will also work great. I've tried the hack with making the flower divider with the tape. It worked fine, but the trouble is that you have to create new one each time you put new flowers in. I decided to make something what will last for longer. I will choose the vase you are using the most. I take a big piece of air dry clay and roll it out flat to the same thickness, about 1 cm. I mark slightly the top part of my vase on the clay and then a few centimeters away from that line I start cutting out the irregular shape. You can make it just flat, round without additional edge. I thought this may add more interest to the vase. I have small metal round cutters in two different sizes. I randomly cut out the round shapes on my clay. Of course, the holes which are passing the border of the vase edge won't have any use, but again, it's just to add more interest. You can cut them by hand, but make sure the holes are big enough for the flowers to go through. I remove the excess clay and smooth out any imperfections.
I gently remove it from the table and place it on the vase. I slightly fold the edges and leave it to dry. This flower frog can be also made with polymer clay. In that case you won't have to protect it. Because air dry clay is not waterproof, I have to apply layer or varnish. I'm using a gloss mod podge. I give it a quick sanding and then apply it all over the piece. It is a great item for helping you with arranging the flower bouquet. Usually flowers just drop to the sides. With this they are nicely standing up.